Kazuo Sakamaki has led an intriguing life. He went from being the secret weapon of the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor to America's first prisoner of war to an international president for Toyota. After being captured during the attack on Pearl Harbor, Sakamaki was disavowed by Japan. His own country wouldn't acknowledge his existence, and he was stuck in U.S. military custody. When he eventually made it back to Japan after World War II, he got unwanted media attention and death threats. Some of his own countrymen saw him as a coward. How did Kazuo Sakamaki come to preside over one of the most popular and successful automobile manufacturers? Welcome to Intrigued Mind, where we'll look upon the life of America's first prisoner of war during World War II. On November 8, 1918, Kazuo Sakamaki was born on a clear autumn day in Awashi Tokushima Prefecture, Japan. Not much is known about Kazuo's youth, besides that he was the second oldest of eight brothers. He graduated from the 60th class of the Imperial Japanese Naval Academy in 1940. War was brewing, and the world as Kazuo knew it was soon going to change. Because he came from a large family and was therefore considered more expendable, Kazuo was selected along with nine others to pilot Kohyo Teki class midget submarines for a secret mission. Small, cramped, with only enough room for two co-pilots, all the midget submarines had in the way of defense was the element of surprise. Kazuo, with his co-pilot Kyoshi Inagaki, crewed the HA-19. The submarine fleet, totaling five Kohyoteki class midget submarines, were supposed to torpedo U.S. warships when the attack on Pearl Harbor began. Once their payloads were depleted, they were to scuttle their vessels. With room aboard the midget submarines only allowing for two torpedoes, the submarines were destined for short lives. And so were their pilots. Their first mission was the battle that would ignite the flames of war between the United States of America and Imperial Japan. The attack on Pearl Harbor occurred on December 7, 1941. It resulted in the deaths of 2,335 U.S. servicemen and the sinking or disabling of more than 10 U.S. warships. The attack on Pearl Harbor was a decisive victory for Japan, who only lost 64 men, including 9 of the 10 submarine crew members. Kazuo, however, survived the battle and found himself the very first prisoner of war to the U.S. Pearl Harbor is located on the southern coast of Oahu, Hawaii's third largest island. It's surrounded by heavy clusters of reef, which made navigation for the submariners difficult. Throughout the course of the attack on Pearl Harbor, Kazuo and his co-pilot tried numerous times to gain access to the harbor, but were stopped by uncooperative currents and U.S. mines. Unable to enter the harbor and deploy their torpedoes, the submarine became stranded on a reef. Their primary mission failed. Kazuo ordered his co-pilot, Kiyoshi Inagaki, to swim to shore and attempted to scuttle the submarine. With death all but a certainty and war raging above his head, Kazuo prepared himself for the end. He set the explosives on the vessel and was ready to blow himself up. However, a fault caused the scuttling explosives to not detonate. While his crewmate drowned at sea, Kazuo was washed ashore unconscious. The submarine itself ultimately washed ashore as well, where it was captured. In the hours after the battle for Pearl Harbor, Kazuo was found and taken as a prisoner of war by the United States military. Pulled from the beach by Hawaiian-American serviceman David Akui, he was taken into military custody. His submarine was captured and became a showpiece that the military would take around to raise money for war bonds. Kazuo Sakamaki awoke under armed guard in a U.S. military hospital. He had just become America's first prisoner of war. For the disgrace of capture, Imperial Japan struck Kazuo's name from their records and disavowed and refused to acknowledge his existence. Left with the guilt of surviving, Kazuo begged his captors to allow him to end his own life. His captors always denied him this request. While in prison, Kazuo would often harm himself by burning his skin with the ends of lit cigarettes. In March of 1942, Japan acknowledged and honored the lives of the nine midget submarine crewmen lost in Pearl Harbor. Their faces appeared in every paper as honored war heroes. There was no mention or acknowledgement of Kazuo Sakamaki in the wartime press, however. Even Kazuo's own family was kept in the dark about the truth of where their son was. It would not be until many years later that Kazuo's sacrifice would be acknowledged and recognized by Japan and its people. Kazuo resolved to survive. Working through his suicidal state, Kazuo committed himself to a life of pacifism. During his time as a prisoner of war, he taught himself the English language using newspapers and dictionaries. By the end of the war in 1945, Kazuo was well versed in the English language. With the war over, Kazuo was repatriated, and he had to return to a country that didn't even technically acknowledge his existence. He arrived home in 1946 and was met with much undesired attention. A media spotlight shone on him from his arrival. Japan's first prisoner of war, and with that, the court of public opinion. He received a lot of hate mail, where for some, the wartime sentiment of suicide in the face of disgrace had not ended. 
Described as a man that valued privacy, Kazuo did not appreciate or care for the media spotlight his story created. Having grappled with his own guilt about his survival and enduring years of imprisonment, he had come home to find no peace. Kazuo did not let this dissuade him, and between his return to Japan in 1946 and the publishing of some wartime notes in 1949, he lived his life. He got married, had children, and began working for Toyota Motor Corporation, thanks to the help of an acquaintance of his who worked at the company. Over the years, Kazuo worked his way up through the Toyota Motor Corporation. He was liked by his colleagues. He even started a company badminton team. While there, he proved himself a strong-willed and competent businessman. Twenty years of dedication and hard work paid off as Kazuo Sakamaki became the president of Toyota's Brazilian subsidiary in 1969. He would preside over that branch and work for Toyota until his retirement in 1987. Kazuo lived a quiet life until his death in 1999, at the age of 81. He never spoke about the war with relatives or loved ones. He never spoke of the war to the reporters that would visit his house every year on December 8th, starting with his return in 1946. It wasn't until 1991, when attending a conference at the National Museum of the Pacific War in Fredericksburg, Texas, USA, that he would speak of the war and be reunited with HA-19, his submarine from the war. Upon being reunited, he reportedly cried, having not seen the submarine in 50 years. In 2021, Kazuo's son, Kiyoshi Sakamaki, republished his father's notes and memoirs, giving us much of the detail we know of his life today. In general, his is a story of great courage and perseverance in the face of both wartime sacrifices and in his struggle to lead a meaningful life after being cast aside by his nation. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments below.